This is a tiny removable bolt. And I'm not quite sure what Petzl intends for this to be used as, but I definitely know how they don't want you to use it. And so we used it in a cave to explore a new lead. And we are going to brake test this in some concrete. Oh, more concrete. And we're gonna brake test it in some real rock so we can better understand how sketchy we can be and still get away with it. <laughs> Let's see what this actually is used for. So it looks like these are intended to be used with multiple bolts for repelling and not necessarily for lead climbing. Petzl's product page says it's for suspension and anchor placement and caving. I have yet to see people actually use it for that. <laughs> They're all lead climbing on these things and I wanna know if that's dangerous. So in order to find out how sketchy cavers were, I cosplayed as a caver. I just, I'm new. I just talk a big game so you'll take me. In order to go test this myself. So the specific cave that we went to required what they call ceiling suckers. We're not at the bad part yet. We're about to be. So we finally got to the place where they wanted to explore this new lead. And they found out I was an aid climber and so I was up. And we're gonna find out if that's a good idea or not after I get back home, <laughs> if I make it home. It's got a dog bone already attached to it, a Dyneema sling wrapped twice. So I'll break test that too after I trust my life to it. I should probably do that in a different order, but we're gonna to try to explore a new lead today in this cave. And I'm supposed to find a new hole for them to explore because there's not enough cave already. The concern is like rock quality. Because if you stick something tiny like this in there, then you fall on the one right before it, which leads right back to the rock quality issue. I have a really burly 8.6 millimeter dynamic rope going over these sharp flips right here. What could go wrong? So I went over that steep part. I've been back cleaning quite a bit to conserve the pulses, but I'm gonna leave this one here because we have to clean in a traverse to get to this because I'm trying to get to this good rock. I'm actually not very excited about this placement, but that's good rock. And then I'll be able to poke my head up there and see if this was worth doing it. It's the things you don't worry about that get you. I was worried that I would be cold. I am cooking in this wetsuit and my Canyon boots, but I have four bolts in here because I don't trust these as much as I was leading on earlier. So like there's an inch of clay on the ceiling before I could get to rock. That doesn't make me feel comfortable, but it's holding ish. Behind me is like an awesome crawl way. How was it? Oh, hold on, my balls hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex is doing some human testing for us. I'm so confident in my anchor. Now we're belaying him while he goes up. <laughs> Dude. So it goes to another dome, but it looks kind of promising. So there's like a little 30 foot crawl and then where the waterfall is coming down over there, it cuts up to the right and it's just this beautifully decorated dome. Like it's probably like 40 foot. It looks good though. Like I, it's probably worth coming back to. Good climb. I'm glad that led to something. Sometimes it doesn't. I have. This on me because I'm cold now, and I got hand warmers <laughs> in my pockets because I'm freaking cold. <laughs> it's sure nice to be warm, dry, and mud free, which I will be able to show you this in detail now without shivering. So this has a plunger right here, which moves these parts right here, up there, and then when it goes in the rock, it expands out. Plunger itself doesn't feel very secure because it's just plastic, but all it's doing is keeping you from squeezing this, allowing that to stay put. Just every time I see this, it feels so flimsy. And this hanger also feels flimsy when it flops around, but what it used to be was more fixed on there. And therefore, if you didn't put it in straight and then pulled it, that the whole bolt would rotate. And so now it, it will keep the bolt still while finding its true path. If you do squeeze the plunger and you pull against that O-ring good enough, don't lose that O-ring. What you have here, the hanger does come off and those flap pretty loosely until you put it on here, but you have to squeeze it for it to fit. So then you just slide the O-ring back on and you are good to go. The hanger on this is aluminum and it weighs 22 grams, which is almost half the weight of our lightest stainless hanger. So this is a 12 millimeter Petzl Pulse that we tested in some granite. And it's rated in shear at 25 kilonewtons, but it broke at 47 and 40 kilonewtons in the two tests that we did. But in tension, it's rated for 20 kilonewtons and ours pulled out and broke at 17. All numbers I'm pretty happy with, 
but this weighs 127 grams and this one is 56 grams. So it's not just the weight of the bolts that you consider, but the hole required for them to fit in. An eight millimeter or five sixteenths hole requires less battery and a lighter drill versus a 12 millimeter hole. So the manual says we're gonna get 15 kilonewtons in shear and 12 kilonewtons in tension. And for some reason, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna say, wow, somewhere in this video, because life's just never that simple. So Climbing Taiwan has tested a bunch of bolts as well. And he has this whole chain hoist and a rope to hold and catch things in order to hopefully not hit him in the face. But I'm actually wondering if he'd be interested in doing this test with us. Sample number two, we're gonna test in tension. Hey. Hey, what are you up to? Uh, we're out filming right now, testing removables. Have you ever tested the eight millimeter pulses before? Uh, they're a bit out of my budget. Well, how about I'll cover the cost of the bolts if you fly all the way to Washington and come break them with me. I'll be right over. All right, I'll see you soon. All right, see you, Ryan. If only life was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go break some bolts? Yeah, let's go. Okay. So I'm gonna show Kevin and I'm gonna show you guys, cause he's never seen this and you guys haven't seen this, mobile Slack Snap. We've been waiting months to present this to you and I'm very excited because this is the application in which you would need it. Before I unbag my bag, put it on your back. All right. The idea is that this is carryable, liftable. You can take it places oh, and nice. you can fly with it if you wanted to go crazy places. Like, I don't know, Taiwan. You wanna try it? Can a girl do it? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Is that lighter than your setup in Taiwan? Oh, it's, yeah, it's, lighter, <laughs> yeah, it's lighter than my 6 ton liver chain hoist. So this includes the pulling, the muscle, the brains, the load cell, and the entire uh, pulley setup. We've got heavy stuff to lighter stuff. This is the drill for our drill powered pulley that's going to give us our muscle. We don't have to have that. You could do a team building exercise and have a bunch of people pull it like we did in Iceland when we tested ice fruit. And we got a bunch of soft stuff in here for our anchors and our catchers. We got a bunch of hard stuff, which is really hard to reduce the weight of steel carabiners, which you do inevitably need some. And the mobile slack snap itself. A 11 to one setup with defenders around the pulleys and as much rope as you need to do some stuff. And what's nice is you can get a longer rope if you need to do more stuff. And this is our squash bag that is holding our load cell nice and tidy. And it wouldn't be a how not to episode if I didn't bring up a drill powered pulley in it. So we have a four bolt anchor here in case you're trying to break something like a rope or you need to anchor it off to something. But the petzl pulse that we're going to test is just gonna be placed, yes, in the concrete. And then we need something to measure it. And so that's where our load cell is going to come in. And we can use this guy if we wanted to, which is the load cell, the brain, and the cable coming out of the side. That goes up to 50 kilonewtons. I don't think we need that today. I can use a line scale three with a defender on it. We have our pulley set up, which is gonna be pulling this thing. And these bolts are going to be back tensioning. You wanna tie everything off so when something breaks, you don't. And then I'm going to attach the other side of the pulleys to these bolts and the Z2 to this one. And that is going to be my safety because I am in the line of fire. I could always set up a redirect here and be pulling way back there around the corner. Since you came all the way over here, would you like to do the honors? Oh my. All right, as per instructions, we got a four cutter SDS drill bit. Uh, we marked our length so we don't need to just keep drilling. So here we go. All right, holes nice and clean. We have our knob screwed all the way down so we can retract the plunger. Fully flush all the way down. We're gonna tighten up our knob. Peak mode. And now we're ready to pull. What we got here is a safe line scale three. All of our 90s are correct, so we're not gonna be all twisting things funny because when you pull it tight, they are gonna twist otherwise. So we're gonna pull all the slack out of the system now and make sure these are sitting correctly. We were able to add these three inch pulleys here to make it an 11 to one. Otherwise it would just be a nine to one. You wanna see something crazy? How much force can I put on by just doing this? You have to have the look. 
the big reveal. Two points, I thought I was hoping for four. The only problem that we have to mitigate now is this goes flying. Otherwise, you'll have a wall, like me, of broken line scale threes. So you simply tie a bowline onto here and then turn the camera back on once you actually get it correct. Then you thread this to be a, a munter hitch and one back there. And by having two, instead of a super munter, you have two, you can actually pull this pretty simple. So as this is moving, this uh, will move along with it. But if this goes flying, when it goes flying, it just dead stops that whole thing. And that keeps that from hitting us. Well, this is not gonna be moving. This is going to be sitting here until it's not. And this is just going to catch this with a little bit of slack in here once this comes out. So we have a redundant way to keep this from hitting me. Ooh, that's so scary. Oh, the hanger broke. Before we reveal this, what's your guess? You heard it. Well, the hanger broke, so I'm guessing <laughs> about close to 20. 19, if this is the price is right. 17.20. And they said what, 15? That's good. It's good it broke higher than they said. That hanger is weaker than that skinny bolt. That's crazy. Will you remove that for us? <laughs> strap I can. Yeah. <laughs> wow, oh. it worked. Oh, dude, that ended oh. it. Did, it did break the bolt. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the kind of cone is. So that's the thinnest part of the diameter of the whole shaft. I want to know how strong it is in tension. The way we're going to pull in tension is with this bolt remover on our bolt buster table. So the bolt remover has given us 20 kilonewtons before when we put a coupler on it, a grade eight bolt and a hanger that is not going to get too mad when we pull on it straight up. We've got our force. We've got our bolt. And that's our setup with our OG bolt buster setup. So I was putting these in the roof of some caves and I'd like to know how strong it was. Oh God. 15, straight out. God, I just want it to be over. No, just be done with it already. Oh my, no, my poor concrete. <laughs> Fourteen straight up definitely doesn't work anymore, but it's it's um, it didn't break. It came out. Rock is what you should be concerned about with these, not the bolt itself. Good limestone could easily be that strong. But concrete's not realistic. It's not real rock. Fine. If only it was that easy to reset all this up to do a test in real rock. I'll have Kevin explain how this is set up. Hi, we're gonna start at the bolt. Here's our bolt. The load cell is extended with a long soft shackle. Got a line scale three, nicely protected with the defender. Got a round sling extending out our block and tackle because we only have so much throw. And here's the other side and the line we'll be pulling on. And we extended this back to the tree. And here's an essential part. This is our overhead recoil line to keep our pulleys and everything off the ground, nice and clean. Along the way, we've tied multiple butterflies and notice here that we have each of our hard points connected. So they don't come flying and hitting our faces. <laughs> have they ever hit you before? Uh, no, but I've had some bolt pieces parts. Let's do some science. So instead of using the Z2R, we are going to pull with our ascenders, with ascenders, not our hands. And we're gonna sit in rowboat style because in Iceland we learned wearing crampons that you don't want to fall. Uh, you want to already be sitting when it breaks. And so we're gonna see how much force four of us get while pulling this eight millimeter pulse. That is team building exercises right there. Very similar result. Whoa. A little rock, but a little higher. I'm so stoked that we did that with just four people pulling. So what's it like for you when you guys break stuff? Are you using chain hoist? Yeah, we're using a six ton lever chain hoist. We can add a two to one. This little thing could probably pull up to 90 <laughs> kilodunes, man powered, but it's kind of sketchy sometimes. <laughs> How do you think the catcher worked? Was that your first time using a catcher? Uh, That kind, yeah, worked yeah. great. But imagine like 10 firefighters pulling that. Oh that God, that's scary. That's as scary as a truck pulling it. So the idea is that you can just go out in the wild with a bunch of friends and pull something or have a 
team of firefighters do a team building exercise, or you can just hook it up to a truck or ATV and pull the tail or C2. Let's pull this bad boy in tension and hopefully it breaks less because I don't want to do that again. I came all the way out. Whoa. That is kind of fun, I'll admit. <laughs> wow, that was enough to rappel on, but holy moly. And I would say that was placed better than what I had it in, in the cave. So this is five millimeter Dyneema sheath, Dyneema core rope. And that is what they'll double wrap in a hanger and tie off with a fisherman's. And they do that so they can eliminate a carabiner and then they, of course, use a carabiner to clip the rope to it. So, how strong is that? That was stronger than the hanger. Cute on it a little bit, but I think we could put it on a stronger hanger. Oh, let's find out how strong it actually is, even though it doesn't matter. 23.74. That's what a lot of carabiners are rated at. I have bad news for you guys. We're not the badasses we thought we were. The only dangerous thing we're doing is caving itself. It's interesting how much the result will vary depending on what you put this in. Mountain Mullet did a test where he pulled straight out of a concrete block and he got 20 kilonewtons, but the wings fell off. He's got a lot of tests on bolts that you should go check out. Now I test things you're not supposed to do with gear, not because I'm saying it's okay, but because people are doing that. And I think having that information is better. I don't want to use the word safer than not having that information at all. In that cave, as nervous as I was putting this in the rock and the rock being as crappy as it was, that I was kind of more worried about the fact it was raining outside and the water level was only, yeah. So caving inherently is dangerous and this just adds to that. So in that cave, we were sorta safe enough, ended up leaving just fine. And if you want to go see us do another cave where we spent 62 hours trying to get to the top of a 400 foot rappel, you should go check out that video next. Forgot to bring up, we sell these.